Thank you very much. My name is Akos Ledeci. I'm from Vanderbilt University. I really enjoyed the key keynote of Mark Hansen because we have been in the same boat for 12 years. We have been working on wireless sensing system. We have done pollution monitoring, bridge monitoring, uh, all kinds of other stuff. But my favorite pet project is, is uh, shooter localization. It started out 10 years ago with, uh, with obviously, military uh, TARPA funding. Okay, so just a really quick technical introduction of how you can measure, uh, what you can measure about the shot. So if the shooter is there, takes a shot with a rifle, then you can actually measure two things. One is the muzzle blast. Actually, that's the uh, sound you typically hear, which propagates from the shooter toward the sensor. The sensor is over there. But most rifles fire supersonic bullets uh, that generates a shock wave. And that front, you can see, that you can also measure with a microphone. So these are the two things that you can measure. And typically, what you are interested in is actually the time of arrival of the uh, signal at your microphone. And if you have multiple, multiple microphones, you can uh, localize the shooter. So th this is how a modern, uh, traditional shooter location system looks like. It was done by BBN uh, for the Iraqi war. It's called Boomerang. You can see seven microphones up there. Uh, so it's big, expensive, uh, but it works uh, quite well. Okay. So we looked at this problem from a different angle. What can we do with really small sensors? And if you remember that picture from the keynote with the old phone and those uh, ugly sensors, well, we have been using those sensors uh, originally. But of course, we uh, graduated now. Uh, to smartphones. Okay? So the idea is that uh, these days even soldiers carry smartphones, so why not use smartphones to locate the shooters? Uh, since a smartphone is a single microphone, you need multiple microphones to locate it, so they are networked, they share their detection data, and uh, collaboratively decide where the uh, shooter is. Okay? Now, of course, a smartphone, it turns out, is not very good at this. There are multiple technical reasons why uh, for a system like that, uh, a smartphone would do a really crappy job. So instead, we designed a little additional sensor. Okay, it's about this big. You can consider it as a, a special Bluetooth headset. It has a Bluetooth chip, a better GPS than what the uh, uh, phone has, and of course, a special microphone. Okay. So you can do a pretty good job with this. Uh, you need five or six of these to actually locate the, uh, the shooter. This is just physics. You need that much data to, to do that. So DARPA didn't like the fact that you need six soldiers running around to, to locate a, a, sh a shooter. So they gave us a few months to come up with a better solution. So just to show that we are not beyond hacking ourselves, uh, since we only had two months, we used existing hardware from previous projects and had hacked uh, this together. This has four microphones. Once you have four microphones in a, a system, you can actually tell angles, not just time of arrival. And with that, you can do a a better job. So actually, two of these uh, can locate the shooter as well. And so it is how the user inter in interface looks. Uh, I don't know how well you can see it, but basically in this case, we had six sensors in the shooting range, and, and this guy was shooting about 100 meters away. And we can typically tell, depending on which system you use, uh, anywhere from 1 to 10 degrees accuracy, uh, the bearing, and the range is typically 5% uh, or so. All right. So there's a whole lot more information if somebody cares to read these uh, papers or just send me an email if you, if you want to know. I think I'm way under six. Thank you.